Hey everyone, welcome back to Cryptids Unveiled. Now, I already know what some of you guys are thinking. Oh my god, another one of these stupid cryptid videos. And it seems to be about 50-50 lately. A lot of y'all seem to really be enjoying this type of content. And some of you guys think that we're just trolling and spreading nonsense, and that's totally fine. If you think it's dumb, then comment and tell us why. Personally, I do think that there's something going on with these videos, and the more we open our minds to the possibilities, the more we can discover. It's not really about saying, you know, that these videos are undeniable proof, but more so just opening our minds and trying to question what might possibly be living in our reality. So someone sent us this link in the comments of our Thailand video, and to me it's one of the best cryptid videos that I've ever seen. It's a pretty straightforward video. It's just what seems to be a hairy tiny person. It doesn't seem to be any CGI, and I highly doubt that it's another performance or costume. There's definitely something going on, and I think we all have the right to ask questions. Now the video goes pretty fast, so let's take a look at some still frames. It looks like these dirt bikers are just riding through the Aceh forest on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia. As they're riding down this path, a small humanoid being gets frightened and starts running away from them. You can see that this being is carrying a spear and looks to be quite hairy, something that's not really mentioned in the articles that cover the video. It is moving pretty fast and it runs into the tall grass in order to get away. The people on the bikes then go after it as they're quite shocked at what they just saw. Now, the footage is shaky and overexposed, but there are a couple shots that show that this is in fact some sort of living creature. Um, it doesn't seem to be some sort of human teenager that's just out in the wilderness of some lost tribe, and it's definitely not dwarfism. You can see that the proportions are clearly adult human proportions, just at a much smaller scale. So, it's really intriguing because in this area, Nat Geo and History Channel have covered finding bones of an ancient pygmy people, but it seems a little fishy. It just seems like a way to divert curiosity by giving us a corporate answer. However, the issue is that they date these beings similar to how they date cavemen, which is of course thousands and thousands of years ago. But this isn't just some fantastical idea. In fact, the mainstream media doesn't even deny that this video is real. There isn't any fact checking and the spread of the news gained the attention of the Aceh government and they dispatched a search team to find the Monte people and examine their real existence as if they would actually release their genuine findings if they discovered anything, because this would most likely debunk or skew the modern evolution narrative. Why are there tiny small humanoid beings in the forest? It would bring up too many questions. The Monte people are one of the earliest ethnic groups frequently mentioned in the legendary folklore said to inhabit Aceh, Indonesia. The mythical Monte tribe are said to be smaller than the average man and flee when they see people from the outside world. There's a record from the 17th century where it's claimed that two Monte tribesmen were captured and presented to the Sultan. But of course, mainstream experts say that this is all legend and that there isn't any evidence. Well, I think a lot of us think that this video seems to say otherwise, and there's really nothing to debunk the legitimacy of the video. These experts tell us that an ancient race of small hobbit-like humans lived on the Indonesian island of Flores, on the other side of the archipelago around 50,000 years ago. They stood around three and a half feet tall and had smaller brains. Fossils of the Flores Hobbit showed that the early people had small brains and no chin. You see that there's no mention of these beings having had hair at all, and it's entertaining to consider that these might be completely separate from human beings. 
So you can see why they would want to keep this hush-hush, as it sort of begins to connect with other cryptids such as Bigfoots and Sasquatches from around the world. Are they maybe other versions of humans? The small tribe were also recognized as hunters and guerrilla warriors when the Dutch held Indonesia in the 19th century. News of the creature first reached the West in the early 20th century via Dutch colonists. In 1918, the Sumatran governor, L.C. Westenek, recorded an event that took place in 1910. A boy from Padang, employed as an overseer by Mr. Van H., had to stake the boundaries of a piece of land for which a long lease had been applied. One day, he took several coolies under the virgin forest of the Barisin Mountains near Loebuak Salisik. Suddenly, he saw some 15 meters away a large creature, low on its feet, which ran like a man. It was very hairy and was not an orangutan, but its face was not like an ordinary man's. Others have speculated that it was Orang Pendek, which literally means short man, but refers to cryptids in a remote mountain forest of Sumatra because you can see if they claim that it's just some lost tribe, that they can say it's just some deformation or dwarfism. But if it's some sort of cryptid, then that's completely different. Researchers have reported numerous sightings of Orang Pendek since the 1920s, whom they believe are no more than 120 centimeters in height. This humanoid creature is said to be bipedal and covered in thick fur. Regardless of the size, it's an incredibly powerful creature and is said to have the strength to rip small trees straight out of the ground, according to Exemplor, which refers to it as an ape man of Sumatra. Westenek recorded another encounter in 1917. A Mr. Ustink, owner of a coffee plantation in Dataran, was in the forests at the base of the Boikit Kaba when he saw a figure sitting on the ground about 30 feet away. According to Ustink, his body was as large as a medium-sized native's, and he had thick square shoulders not sloping at all. The color was not brown, but looked like black earth, a sort of dusty black, more gray than black. He clearly noticed my presence. He did not do so much as turn his head, but stood up on his feet. He seemed quite as tall as I, about 175 meters. Then I saw that it was not a man, and I started back, for I was not armed. The creature took several paces, without the least haste, and then, with his ludicrously long arm, grasped a sapling, which threatened to break under his weight, and quietly sprang into a tree, swinging in great leaps, alternatively left and right. These sightings continued into the 1920s, some of them at very close range. In May 1927, a Dutch plantation worker called A. H. W. Kramer, who lived in Karinchi, reported seeing an Oren Pendek from a distance of only 10 meters. It had long hair and black skin. The beast ran away, leaving small human-like footprints. Also, in 1927, an Orang Pendeg was said to have been caught in a tiger trap, but broke free. The traces of blood it left were examined by zoologist K.W. Damerman, who conducted that it was not from a bear, gibbon, or human. In the 1930s, interest in the creature waned, perhaps due to in part to the outbreak of the Second World War and the Indonesian struggle for independence that followed. It was not thrust into the public gaze again until the Englishwoman, Debbie Martyr, began her research in the late 1980s. Martyr stayed on Sumatra and began to collect eyewitness accounts that would eventually fill several volumes. She had her own sighting in 1990. I saw it in the middle of September. I had been out here four months. At the time, I was 90% certain there was something here, that it was not just traditional stories. When I saw it, I saw an animal that didn't look like anything in any of the books I had read, films I had seen, or zoos I had seen. It did indeed walk rather like a person, and that was a shock. It was a relatively small, immensely strong, non-human primate. But it was very gracile, and it was an odd thing. If you looked at the animal, you might say that it resembled a siamang, or an agile gibbon, on steroids. It didn't look like an orangutan. Their proportions are very different. It's built like a boxer, with immense upper body strength. It was a gorgeous color, moving bipedally and trying to avoid being seen. So, what do you think? Is this another BS video just to dramatize some random little person in the forest? Or is there something else? Something that's been hidden from us? A group of intelligent, hairy, small humanoids that have been living in this area for thousands of years, and have been known to us since the 17th century? I can't help but wonder, why do we not take local and native stories as anything more than fantasy? Why do we assume that so many of us never having been outside our own countries, that we know so much about the world and who inhabits it? 
because we sit in our couches and watch History Channel documentaries? Why is it considered crazy to just ask questions? I think it's pretty smug of us to think that we've got it all figured out because we went to school and regurgitated some words from some guy called Darwin. I think Charles Fort put it best when he said, People with a psychological need to believe in marvels are no more prejudiced and gullible than people with a psychological need not to believe in marvels. So please, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Is this just some well-organized hoax? Or is this world just much more diverse and bizarre than we're willing to believe? Thank you all for your time and attention, and all we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?